And as we mentioned earlier, uh, after the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, and the Secretary of Defense, Austin Lloyd, uh, visited uh, Ukraine, actually in uh, Kyiv, to meet uh, with um, uh, the leadership there. The Russians have intensified their attack on infrastructure there in Ukraine and also saying that this escalation could lead to World War III. Here to talk about uh, this and more is FRC's Executive Vice President, Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, who spent uh, the last four years of his 36-year military career serving as the Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence. He was also one of the original members of the U.S. Army's Delta Force. General, thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Tony, I'm glad to be with you. So uh, you, we've talked about how Ukrainian forces are standing up to what uh, the Russians are attempting to do. Uh, now the West is starting to take note that the Ukrainians are serious about defending their freedom, and they're starting to give more support in terms of military hardware and equipment. Russia saying this could uh, escalate the situation and lead to World War III. What do you think? Well, first of all, what does that mean? I mean, I would make the case, Tony, that we're in World War III right now. It's not, it's not like World War I or World War II. It, it, but, but look at the number of nations that are involved in this uh, on either side. Uh, you got China, Russia, Belarus, uh, Moldova, uh, and, and parts of the Middle East that are lined up with the Russians. And then you've, you've got the Europeans and probably the most of the rest of the world. So. This is, I, I think that this is a threat that is being uh, used to the point that it has lost its meaning. I, I, I don't think that uh, people are taking it as seriously now as they were when they first started hearing these kinds of threats. And I think that uh, the last thing that Putin wants to do, I think, is to use a nuclear weapon uh, because that will ensure that uh, he has no future because, uh, yeah, first of all, he will probably be one of the targets uh, if, if he does that and there is a response from the NATO forces. With his movement in uh, eastern Ukraine, is uh, Putin at a point where he might be able to, to, to close to declaring a limited victory and, you know, bring this to an end? Well... Not if the Ukrainians have any say-so about it. Right now, the Ukraine is pushing back again, once again. They're pushing the Russians out of some of the positions that they have previously seized. The Ukrainians are just tough, rugged people that uh, are also showing the superiority of American and Western technology. You look at the uh, weapons that we have sent them, mo most of it has been American-made. And it's just like it was in uh, the first Gulf War when Saddam Hussein had nothing but Russian uh, equipment and, uh, and, and the U.S. and its allies left a trail of tears all the way back to Baghdad uh, by simply uh, killing them as they were trying to pull out of Kuwait. And uh, I think we're seeing the same thing now. The, the, our superiority in the field of uh, of maneuver battle space technology, I think, is once again uh, rising to the surface. So uh, the Ukrainians have a, a, a marvelous chance of winning this war. No kidding, winning this war. But it's going to go on for a while because of what you just said. I don't think that the Russians are going to uh, pull out of there. They're certainly not going to be able to negotiate a settlement for that area, not anytime soon at least. So. I think it's going to go on for a while yet. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin in a uh, wide-ranging interview today with Fox News said that, quote, the fight has evolved and so the needs of Ukraine have changed. What do you think about that? I think what that means is that the administration has just accepted the fact that the Ukrainians actually could win this thing. They expected a, a three- to seven-day war and then a change of government, and, and, and it hasn't happened. In fact, the Ukrainians have, have uh, surprised probably the whole world with the, uh, the veracity uh, and, and the toughness that they've demonstrated on the battlefield. And uh, so I think that uh, what we have here now is we have a situation where the administration of Joe Biden is accepting that these guys may be on the winning side, and we need to get in behind them and support so, them. 
So it's kind of like, all right, now we're going to get serious about giving the material and support that they need. That's my that's my opinion, my assessment of the situation. Now, first of all, let me say I'm glad he sent the two secretaries over there. That was a good thing, and they were the right two people to go over there. Uh, and I'm glad that he wasn't there. I'm glad that he didn't go, as some of the other heads of state have gone, because I think it would have been a far less substantive uh, meeting there, but uh, but he sent the right two guys, and that's a very good step forward. All right. Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, always great to talk with you. Thanks so much for joining us. I know you're in high demand, so I, I thank you for working up, uh, working out a little time for me as well. <laughs> thank you. Good beer with you.